Hi, my name is Jen, and I'm going to tell you about our design study we conducted with evolutionary biologists from the University of Idaho. These biologists work with complex phylogenetic tree data to answer questions about the diversity of life on Earth. We built a tool to visualize their data and iteratively refine the tool through user feedback. We conducted a case study to Jen, stop. I don't think that's a talk we should give. You should definitely give the other one. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> This talk is about a rich, diverse set of contributions that emerged from our experiments of treating design study as a method of inquiry and focusing on ways to achieve rigor when doing so. We grounded our research in the new interpretivist design study perspective that Meyer and Dykes presented at Viz last year. As a rejection of the software-centric view of traditional design study, this interpretivist perspective embraces a messy, subjective, design-oriented view emphasizing the broad types of learning that can come from it, from insights about our design processes to insights about people's relationship with their data. This perspective is anchored in six criteria for rigor, informed, reflexive, abundant, plausible, resonant, and transparent. They give researchers a different way to think about design studies and what we can learn from them. We adopted this perspective in our design study using it as a method of inquiry. We focused on three of these criteria, reflexive, abundant, and transparent, and experimented with methods to meet these criteria in our work. The result was a diverse set of contributions. We had two new techniques for visualizing multivariate trees with uncertainty. Two experimental writing techniques for reporting on design study. We embedded a mini design study paper within a methods paper and had direct linking in the paper to artifacts from the design study. And we had three methodological insights for conducting an interpretive design study on reflective practices, on recording, reflecting, and reporting with research artifacts, and thoughts on assessing evidence of rigor. In the rest of this talk, I'm going to tell you about some of the ways we adopted this new interpretivist perspective of design study and tell you about some of the exciting things that came out of doing so. Our design study had three main phases of research. The first phase consisted of an immersive field study at the University of Idaho, where I embedded myself in the lab of our collaborators for three months. During this phase, I was able to acquire a deep understanding of how our collaborators think about and work with their data. The second phase focused on iterative design of new visualization techniques, and we developed a tool for the lab we call Trivo. This phase was conducted mostly in my home lab at the University of Utah, but did include several trips back to the University of Idaho for in-person evaluations of the tool. The final reflection phase began as we started to develop ideas for reporting our design study and continued through the design of this talk. What made this design study different from others was our purposeful and systematic consideration of three criteria throughout our research process. We chose to focus on reflexive, abundant, and transparent due to their actionability in our own research interests. The ways in which we focused on them, I'm going to tell you about now. The first criteria we experimented with was reflexive, which encourages researchers to explicitly reflect on how they influence the research and how the research influences them. During this study, especially during the three-month field study, I took regular reflexive memos documenting my insecurities and biases that could potentially have an effect on the research. Examples of these included Directing conversation during a meeting is hard for me. I put up emotional barriers when I am nervous and I have a tendency of shutting down. I have not been recording these interviews as I am in the first week and I do not want to be intrusive. 
Reflexive notes really helped me understand the limitations in the ways I was conducting research and allowed me to make productive changes to the methods I was using. The second criteria we focused on was abundant, which calls for a design study to have rich details, many considerations and designs, and significant time in the field. We focused on abundance in multiple ways, including through our immersive field study, where we attempted to establish a long-term, deep engagement with collaborators as emphasized in Hall and colleagues' design by immersion paper. As a piece of evidence for abundance here, uh, this was the community whiteboard in the Harmon lab. Once you officially became a part of the lab, you had your astrological sign and Enneagram personality number put up on the board. If you're curious, mine is here. A critical way we experimented with this criteria was building an abundant collection of diverse artifacts. We attempted to record everything. We collected a broad variety of artifacts along the way, including sketches, memos, diagrams, prototypes, email correspondence, text messages, photos of whiteboard doodles, related work, and paper drafts. At the conclusion of this study, we ended up with 170 individual artifacts. The final criteria we chose to focus on was transparent. This criteria argues that judgments about the quality of the research need to be made in the context of what was done, how it was done, and why it was done. Transparent reporting of design studies invites this scrutiny. Part of our motivation for creating an abundant collection of artifacts was to be able to transparently report on our process. Building on this collection, one of the ways we sought to support transparency was by explicitly linking to evidence from within our paper. For example, you can click on this linked reference to a text message conversation, and it pulls up a digitized version of the artifact in the browser. The second thing we did with our abundant artifact collection to support transparency was to build an audit trail as a companion to the paper. We developed a web-based interactive timeline where artifacts are represented as clickable squares. Clicking on a square pops up the digitized artifact on the right. This audit trail allows for tracing of our design study inquiry from beginning to end. As we were building our audit trail for reporting on the design study, it became an unexpected internal research tool as well. The act of organizing our artifacts into a timeline spurred us to reflect on our design iterations, leading us to make further changes to our visualizations. This reflection was aided by a tagging system we had implemented for our artifacts, which captures high-level concepts related to the artifact such as design study method employed in the creation of the artifact or the biological concept it is related to, for example, convergence here. This tagging system allowed us to trace the progress of concepts across the design study. Our website transformed into a tool that supported more than transparent reporting. It was also serving a vital role for recording and reflecting within the design study itself. This transformation led to a core methodological insight for us, which we formalized into a concept we call TRACE. TRACE is a construct that supports tracing a design study from multiple perspectives over an abundant collection of artifacts. A TRACE can support tracing the design study temporally for reporting, as well as conceptually for reflecting. The capital R's represent three core research tasks that TRACE should support that are critical for design study. Recording abundant collection of diverse research artifacts. Reflecting on conceptual developments throughout the design study. And transparently reporting on the design study process. TRACE has theoretical links to material traces. Here, the emphasis isn't on supplying dumps of evidence. The emphasis is on the ability to trace pathways from the evidence. Trace is also related to audit trails, which emphasize temporal tracing, as well as annotated portfolios, which focus on concepts embedded in artifacts. Our work is a first step towards theorizing about design study traces. We speculate that positioning the needs and goals of design study against these existing theoretical constructs could lead to further insight into the potential for traces to support rich, transparent design study. 
Trace was exciting, but there were two other methodological insights as well. Systematic reflective practices demonstrably benefited the research and design. And rigor comes from evidence, not just methods. Please see the paper for more details on these. So where do we go from here? And what could we learn from design studies? Interpretivist design study was meant to inspire the community to seek out richer and more varied insights from design study than just tools and techniques. Our work serves as a validation that this can in fact happen. The result of our interpretivist design study were seven different contributions that included new visualization techniques, new writing devices, and methodological insights. We believe that interpretivist design study provides rich opportunities for learning, but how to do this well is still an open question. And what is the role of trace? Trace is one of the more exciting ideas that came out of our design study. And we've only begun to think about what this is as a construct, as well as our implementation of a trace as a website. What might a design study trace mean for supplementary materials, for open science, for design oriented visualization research more broadly? We've only scratched the surface of these investigations, and we hope that our work serves as an inspiration for the community to embrace new ways of thinking about and using design studies and to continue experimenting in this space. And with that, I say thank you.